Hello friends, good morning to all of you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the discriminant function analysis. This is the next biometrical technique we are discussing after the path coefficient analysis. So the students who are watching this video, I must recommend to go and refer the previous path coefficient analysis video so that you can easily understand this discriminant function analysis DFA. So, because it is quite uh, modification of path coefficient analysis. So, I also mentioned the link of path coefficient analysis video in the description box. Go and refer. So, let's get started. Discriminant function analysis first time used by Fisher in 1936. And the use of such discriminant function for plan selection was first time used by Smith in 1936. And he suggested a better way of exploiting the genetic correlation with several characters that show high heritability. Use such character uh, in construction of an index. We called it selection index. It means com combination of information of all the characters associated with the dependent variable like yield. Okay, so selection index is a linear combination of characters that is associated with yield. The best way uh, to know about the selection indices, it involves the discriminant function based on the economic importance of various characters. So the desirable genotypes are discriminate from the undesirable ones. Based on the combination of various characters, this technique is called as discriminant function analysis okay later on in 1943 hazel developed a simultaneous selection model based on the approach of path analysis so many scientists came and uh, with the modification in the path coefficient analysis they developed different techniques for a specific breeding requirement based on their objectives of breeding method so the purpose of discriminant function is to discriminate the individuals that belong to different populations. Okay. Now let's talk about the main important features of discriminant function analysis. The first one is it measures the efficiency of major character combinations in selection. So during the selection, it leads to the manipulation of different characters that ultimately leads to the improvement of economic yield. Okay, this technique also gives information about the yield component and also it aids in indirect selection for the genetic improvement of yield just like path coefficient analysis. Okay, it also based on the assumption of linearity and additivity as in the path coefficient analysis. It also involves variations and covariances. Okay. Now let's talk about how discriminant function analysis is differ from the path coefficient analysis. So in path coefficient analysis, it measures the cause of association between two variables. Okay. In DFA, it measures the efficiency of various characters, various trait combinations during the selection. Okay. PC is based on the simple correlation, while DFA is based on the variances and covariances. In PCA, we calculate the direct, indirect and residual effects for the path analysis. While in this, we are going to um, estimate the weight coefficient, expected um, genetic advance and relative efficiency. Now, PCA helps in determining the yield component. This is also help in determining the yield components. This is the similarity. And PC is based on the statistical assumptions of linearity and additivity. Same statistical assumption in DFA. Okay. Let's come to the different types of selection indices or selection index. There are three types of selection index, classical, general and restricted. In classical selection index, this was first time developed by the Smith in 1936 uh, and during the plant selection. And later on, uh, in animal selection, it was developed by the Hazel in 1943. Now, this is the basic selection indices. It involves several characters simultaneously. The first thing. And the second thing is it helps in discriminate between the desirable and undesirable genotype based on the selection efficiency. Now, second is the general selection index. It was first time proposed by Hansen and Johnson in 1957. This is the modification of the scheme of Smith. Okay. Now this model, the weight of various traits are based on the average statistic 
for several populations so in this selection indices we talk about the weight coefficients okay this selection index has wide application in plant breeding the next is the restricted selection indices this was proposed by the Camthorne and Nonstall in 1959 and Restriction selection indices helps in improving a set of character, keeping the value of other character constant. Okay, sometimes restriction is put on single character and sometimes on the double characters. So in this restricted selection indices, we talk about the one character at a time, or um, there is some restriction on single character, so other other character kept constant. Now, selection index can be computed using one of the three models, either classical selection index, general selection index, or restricted selection index. Now, construction of all these three types of selection indices is based on the phenotypic variance, genotypic variance, and covariance between the variables okay, involved in the selection indices. Now, selection indices is worked out in replicated data only and always based on some statistical and genetical assumptions. The construction of selection index is based on the following statistical and genetical assumptions. Now, it includes random selection of parents for mating. It means the population should be a panmictic population or random mating population. Okay, or Mendelian population. The second statistical assumption is it absence of gene to interaction, of course, because if it is present, then it causes a error in data. Okay, and the component character should be show linearity and additivity nature. Okay, now let's come to the genetical assumptions. Now, diploid segregation is uh, fulfilled. It means normal meiosis process. Okay. Now, lack of maternal effect, what it means? It means if there is a maternal effect, it means the transfer of progeny of a character from female parents only, okay, which cause deviation. Now, next is the absence of linkage. What is linkage? Linkage is the tendency of gene to be linked together, okay. If they are linked together, then they transfer into the next generation, okay. And with the desirable character, the undesirable one is also linked together, and um, that leads to cause the deviation in the data okay the next is the absence of epistasis what is epistasis non-analytic interaction there is a additive 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 dominant or dominant dominant type of interaction is present it means uh, it also causes the deviations or uh, deviate from our original data now absence of multiple allele is it means several more than two alleles or several alleles of a gene affect single character okay this is also not good for the data okay the next one is the equal survival of all the genotypes in a population it means the uh, random mating should be there uh, every uh, genotype has a chance to meet with the other uh, genotype in the population so these all are the assumptions that should be fulfilled for the uh, discriminant function analysis okay now after fulfilling all the assumptions for the construction of selection indexes there are three main steps for construction of selection indexes the first is weighing coefficient the second is expected genetic advance and the third one is relative efficiency okay now let's talk about the weighing coefficients now weighing coefficient refers to the relative importance of various character in the index it means every single character show their importance weigh some importance in the index for example uh, this is the equation okay v1 x1 v2 x2 plus v3 x3 up to the infinite where x1 x2 x3 up to xn represent the phenotypic values of character okay and 1 2 3 these are the characters okay v1 v2 v3 are the corresponding weights means v value calculated from the series of several uh, simultaneous equations that involve phenotypic and genotypic variance and covariance okay v value gives information about the selection indices involving single double triple or multiple characters okay it means the simultaneous equation are solved by the elimination process and b values are obtained okay let's see how if there are three characters 
and yield the following simultaneous equation could be with the help of appropriate variance and covariance of these strains okay we have v1 v2 and v3 these are the weighing coefficients these are the one of the regression coefficients okay and g1 g2 y g3 y these represent the genotypic covariance of character 1 2 3 with dependent trait that is yield okay now v1 v2 3 are the weighing coefficients while w11 w12 1 3 these are the phenotypic variance of character 1 2 3 and covariance between the character 1 with 1 character 1 with 2 1 with 3 respectively okay so by computing all these equations function is optimal once the function is obtained, the discrimination of good genotype from the desirable one will be possible on the basis of phenotypic performance. Okay. Now let's come to the second step for the construction of selection index. The second is the expected genetic advance. Genetic advance of discriminant function is also estimated separately for various selection indices involving many characters with the help of this formula. It includes z and q this is the selection intensity at 5 percent and b1 b2 are the coefficient values for the character 1 and 2 respectively and g1 g2 y g and y are the corresponding genotypic covariance of these traits with the dependent character like yield okay now if we want to calculate the genetic advance by direct method is calculated only uh, for the dependent character with using this formula this is the genotypic variance divided by the phenotypic variance into selection differential okay here is a correction here vg upon vp occur okay and to k selection where vg is the genotypic variance phenotypic variance and k is the selection differential the value is 2.06 remains constant okay now this is the third step for cal uh, for the construction of selection index this is relative efficiency and it is calculated by dividing gs1 upon gs2 we already mentioned in our previous slide that uh, gs1 wow. is the z upon q selection intensity and gs2 is the genotypic variance upon phenotypic variance into selection differential okay divided by 100 the efficiency is called relative efficiency it is expressed in percentage the ratio of genetic advance for discriminate function gs1 to the genetic advance for direct selection gs2 okay now it measures the effectiveness of various selection indices the relative efficiency of direct selection of yield is considered as 100 percent because any selection index that shows superiority over the direct selection means character involved in such index are considered as important and major component of the yield so the contribution of such character is 100 percent and combination of such character has given due to the weightage in the selection of elite genotypes which obtained from the diverse breeding populations okay so these all are the steps for the construction of selection index that involves the weighing coefficient, expected genetic advance and the relative efficiency. Now let's talk about the problems of selection indexes. What are the problems occurred during the construction of selection index? The first one is the non-fulfillment of the assumptions that involved in the construction of selection index like the statistical assumptions and the genetical assumptions. The second major problem is the wise estimates of parameters. It may occur due to errors and during the layout and during the conduction of the experiment trials and the formation of statistical and genetical models. Next is the uncertainty of economic weights that occur due to the different characters that are included in the index. Okay. And the last one is the problem of the reliability. Okay. Once the selection index is constructed, it does not remain realistic for longer duration. It keeps changing. Okay. Okay. Now let's come to the application of selection index in the crop improvement. Okay. Selection index has been used in several crops by different scientists for the genetic improvement of the crops. Now, selection index involves three characters. 
plant height ear plug plant and yield it found uh, 30% more efficient than the selection based on yield alone okay this index was comparable to the index involving five characters like plant height ears per plant yield ear length and ear diameter okay brim and its co-worker in 1959 applied selection index in soybean for genetic improvement of oil yield okay this is the most important line asked in many exams like an icr srf exams or icr net exams uh, brim work on the soybean for the genetic improvement of oil yield and apply the selection index now selection index based on the six character like oil protein yield resistant to lodging fruit period seed weight resulted maximum improvement in oil yield Baker in 1986 has presented good account of different types of selection indices and their applications in plant breeding okay selection indices does not appear to be widespread in practical plant breeding program but there seem to be limited optimism about the potential utility because there is a general feeling that the selection index is more suited to crops in which the value of economic product is determined by you know, readily measurable attributes such as fiber oil content protein content etc now lastly what are the merits and demerits of discriminate function analysis now, there are some merits like in crop improvement program, discriminate function analysis provide information on yield component rates and also its indirect selection for genetic improvement of yield. This technique also applied for both parental population as well as segregating populations. Now, there are some demerits as well like the construction of selection index is difficult task. It requires a lot of statistical calculations and um, sometimes these are not as effective as yield alone. So in spite of making extra effort for the estimation, the calculations become complicated and index is extended to cover many component characters. So selection index is applicable to individual plant selection only. However, family selection is not greatly improved by the use of an index. Because of the some inaccuracies associated with the estimation of variance and covariance and we are including so many characters so there is so many chances of error. Okay, different estimation processes generally provide different values when applied to the same set of populations. So selection indices have some limited applications in the practical plan building. So this is all about the discriminate function analysis and uh, in next uh, video lecture, we are going to talk about the different biometrical techniques and or we can say different mating designs like uh, dial-l, partial dial-l, line into tester, different biometrical techniques in different video lecture. So stay tuned and uh, please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Thank you so much.